Hello, Mr. Ray, Mr. Ryan, are you right? Always. <laughs> Always, yes. Okay. Okay, so we are keeping this list of the locations of the full of bombs you know what's bomb yeah, yeah. explode bombs and their radius a bomb you can imagine is a it's a little dot and then when it explodes it has a the radius a circle right so for example we're given a list of bombs bones bomb oh, it's okay this okay. <laughs> a circle it's and then radius okay <laughs> we're given a list of these bombs and Okay, let me give uh, another one, dog, which Ryan? is the this one. It's a chocolate sauce. All right. Okay, and then That's let me. Venn diagram. Let me. Yeah. Let me, wait, wait, wait. With chocolate sauce in it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, but that's this. like Venn diagram. Okay, so we are given three forms. This is A, B, C. So when A what? explodes. What? Uh, when A is explodes, because this radius, yeah, we know this location, the radius. The radius will cover, you know, because it's it's far enough to reach the center of B. So when this it explodes, B also explodes. No, okay. But not the vice versa. Basically, you is what you're saying. So, A, so, so you so you have three bombs. So you first ignite the A, ignite, yes, A, A bomb, which. And when it explodes, you also ignite the B bomb. Yeah, but when the B I'm a fish. It, it explodes, it doesn't really, because look, this radius is not far to reach the center of C. So this C stays the same. It, it's not an overlapping. It's like the the, the radius needs to be far enough to what catch it. What like a mm -hmm. like like a bomb uh, here? How what, like? Okay, so when A, explode. when we ignite A. Because look, this radius catch the it's far enough to touch the D center, so D also ignites. So wait, so it can like the A ignite the B and then the B ignite the D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's connected. It's connected. Okay, mm. okay. So we want to find out the maximum number of bombs we that can be ignited, exploded by igniting only one bomb. So for example, in this case. We ignite A, so B and, and D and also ignite, but not C, right? Not the C. Yeah? And we just want to find out the maximum number of bombs. And we can also ignite B, for example. If we ignite no, we can't B, because it doesn't reach A. That's true, yes. We ignite B, then it only stops at D. It doesn't reach A, okay? So, you see, A ignite the D. D cannot ignite the A, okay? Wait. So we give them a lo location and radius. Wait. Tupper, and, uh, you know, Wait. a three element Wait. tupper. There's one here and. and <laughs> one here. Okay. So what's, what's here? This is the E, okay? And then this is F, right? Yeah. So obviously F ignite E, okay? But E not ignite F. Yeah, but E can ignite C. E can ignite C, yes, uh, E can ignite C, yes. What kind of problem is this? What kind of data structure can we think about this? You know, A to D, D but not to A. Uh, Three letter thing. A car. Three letter <laughs> thing, okay? Dag. Where well down, dag, directed oh. acyclic, wow. Yeah. Actually, if it can be acyclic or not. Directed could be cyclic, right? So Ooh. for example, like A to B, B to C, C to A, right? I got two pens. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it's a graph. It's a direction graph. It could be a cycle or it could be cycle, okay? So it's a direction graph. Direction graph. So in this direction graph, we want to find out the maximum number of connected components, am I right? Oh. Because we want to find out the maximum number of connected components. Yeah. The, the numbers, the number of the vertex, right? The graph, right? What, what is the graph? Graph is the vertex and the edges. Mm -hmm. So we can visualize this problem as finding the number of maximum connected vertex in the directed graph. What kind of graph traversal algorithm have we talked about? Deficit. Deficit, search, search. Search, search, yes, deficit, search. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and if it's directed graph, and if it's undirected, then we also can use union find to merge here, but this is a directed graph, so union find is not uh, suitable here because, uh, you know, when we need A to D, it doesn't mean D can be 
a link back to A, okay? So, deficit search and breakfast search. Okay, then we talk about deficit search today, breakfast search tomorrow. Hey, Dad, you want to see magic tricks? <laughs> okay, come on. He doesn't even show that the he doesn't even show what's inside there at the beginning. <laughs> he doesn't even show that there was a two pens. Look, oh, okay. look, there are two pens in here. Look, I got two pens. Okay, so <laughs> first of all, given two bombs, we want to find out if A can reach B. If we ignite A, can we also make B explosive? We need to come up with a function that if we ignite A, and then we need to check if B is also affected, exploded, okay? What well, if there's zero bombs? Then we can This is B, the center of B, so we just basically need to what check if, the distance. What if you have bombs, but they can't, but you can't, it, they don't ignite each other? What That's a good problem? case, so yeah, this is the case. They are far apart. They don't so they're not, they're not the... Yeah, they need to like... They need a... No, 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 no. <laughs> no, that's not the way to write it, okay? <laughs> so you see the... If a circumference, uh, no, no, if a if a if a dot is inside like the like uh, the radius. Radius, okay, that's good. We need to find out the distance first, okay? The distance, the distance, and then we want to find out if the distance is smaller or equal than r, right? The radius. If the distance is smaller than r, then it's affected, right? So this r we given this d, d. We want to calculate the distance between two points, A and B, in 2D space. What do you call this? This is called Euclidean distance, right? It's called four quadrants. How do you spell it? Euclidean distance. Yeah. Euclidean. What's Euclidean distance? Okay, so... <laughs> A and B. Okay, A, for example, like... For example, uh, this point is... Uh, one, two, right? One unit here, two unit here, okay? This point is, this point is three and three, okay? So this point is three, three. I got two pens. A, B. Okay, so what's the distance between A to B? Can somebody tell me? Okay, A is in one unit, two unit, one, two. B is at three unit, three unit. So this is 3, this is 3. Okay, so the including distance uh, is yeah. this bit. So how do we calculate this? We want to calculate this bit and this bit. This is... What, what's, what's this? Right triangle. triangle. What's this distance? This is 3 unit, this is 1 unit, 2 unit. What's this unit? 3 yeah. unit, 2 unit, 1 unit. Okay? So we are looking at this triangle, right triangle. 2, 1, what's this? This is A, this is B, this is C. A square plus B square equals C square if this is the right angle, right? So 2 square, two, 4 plus 1 square, 1 equals C square. So C is square root of 5, okay? So this is the distance, square root of 5, which is 2.3 something, okay? Yeah. You check the calculator. Yeah, I know. But Euclidean distance in space for two points. A is x1, y1. B is uh. at x2, y2. The distance is x1 yeah. minus x2, x1 minus x2. Square plus y1 minus y2 square, square root of it. Okay? Get it? Ryan? Yes, he got two pairs. This is called equivalent distance. Another distance is called man. Hunton distance, which is x1 minus x2 plus the absolute value, yeah? y1 minus y2, okay? So it's basically this plus this, the absolute value. But this is equivalent distance, it's calculated this way. We basically, we calculate the distance, this one, this one, and then we calculate this triangle. Okay, so we know this function, and we can build a directed graph. And once we have a directed graph, we can perform a deficit search or breakfast search on it, okay? Define, let's say, max bomb. 
Next bombs. We given a list of bombs B. N equals the length of bombs. N is the number of bombs. Okay. And we build a graph G equals default dictionary list. So we can say G zero is a a, a list of the vertex zero. The vertex zero points to right. For example, zero points to one. Uh, if we ignite the bomb zero, then one is affected and two is affected, and we can say G zero is one and two. Okay. This is kind of data structure graph, directed graph. Then we build this graph. For i in range n, for j in range n. If i not equal j, for example, right? We want to check two bombs, so we have to skip, you know, the duplicates uh, pointing to itself. So we need to skip when i equals j, and overlap. Overlap, uh, actually, overlap is not a good word. Overlap means the the two circles are overlap, but we are not actually checking overlap. I want to check if, if we ignite A, B is affected, so we can just say if... I got pancakes, it disturbed. Okay, then we just call it F function, F, I, J. If we ignite bomb I, J is also exploded. Then we actually have an H, G, I, dot a pen equal to pens j okay so this means that if we ignite bomb i the j bomb j is affected then we build the h from vertex i to vertex j vertex i bomb i to bomb j now we have this uh, direct graph then if we have this direct graph then we need to perform depth search define depth search the current bomb a and then the bomb we have visited, we have seen, okay? So if A in this, if we have visited this bomb A, then we return zero. So this basically this function is that if we ignite on bomb A, how many bombs will be also uh, exploded? So for example, like this, if this is bomb A, and then, then bomb B, bomb C, okay? So if we ignite bomb A, the bomb B will also ignite it and bomb C ignite it then you will return 3 because A has an edge pointing to B, B has an edge pointing to C. So this returns 3, 1, 2, 3. So if A, we have visited A, will return 0. Otherwise, the you know, answer equals the 1. You know, obviously, um, we have this bomb uh, to ignite. Before that, we need to put it into the this table. This is a hash set. This dot add a answer equals one for x in g a. G a means that the bombs that can be that would be exploded if a is bomb a is ignited. Okay, and then answer we go through each uh, each connected vertex plus equal that first search x and v i s okay and then return answer okay so with this function then we need to go through all the bombs if we have n bombs then we have to check each bomb so we have to check n cases if we ignite the bomb one how many bombs can we ignite if we ignite bomb b how many bombs do we ignite and we try these n cases and we get the maximum right so uh, the maximum answer equals at the beginning is zero for i in range n vis equals set answer equals the maximum of uh, answer and then that first search i vis return answer okay because we are setting the set we, we are using a new empty scene table Right? This VIS keeps the vertex, the boom, we have uh, ignited, ignited, we have seen. Okay, so this is every iteration is a new set. Right? So here we don't need to remove it. We, we don't need to remove this vertex here. But you can put it here as well. So VIS dot remove A. Okay. This can be turned into one line. We can say return max. Therefore, search I set 
for i in range n, and if we are given the empty form, we need to specify a second parameter default equals zero. Yeah. So this is a uh, deficit search. The time complexity here O n. Why right, this loop is O n? Deficit search. Deficit search usually is O v plus e. Vertex and edges. For each vertex, that could be. You know, if it's a fully connected graph, right? Remember, if it's a fully connected graph, for each vertex, there are n minus one edges. So actually, actually, this depth search is O n square, right? O n square. So O n square times n is O n cubic. This is the time complexity. The space complexity, the space complexity, we need to use a set, right? This is O n. But for the uh, graph, right? For the graph. This is a graph. This is O n square. Okay, so O n square plus O n plus depth search. Depth search. We're using the recursion here is O n. Right. So O n square plus O n plus O n. So the space complexity is O n square because the most dominant part is O n square. This is depth search. Okay. Always. Okay. So what have you learned today? We learned about bones and using. Can you explain to me the problem and how can we solve it? Yeah. No, you don't need to explain the code. I, I just want the explanation. How how you are acting as a computer? How do you approach to solve this problem? You so know, we have, step by step. We, so we have some bones that we, we need to find the most bones ignited by igniting only one bomb. Yeah, and now and one bomb could be any choice, right? Could be any of them. So if there are three bombs. So if you are given three bombs, then we have to try if we ignite the first one, how many bombs can be ignited overall? If we ignite the second one, how many together? If we ignite the third one, how many bombs can we ignite all together? And we choose the maximum, right? And we're using deficit to solve the problem. Yeah, we use the deficit to solve the problem. Okay. But before that, we need to. We need to build a directed graph, okay? So why is it directed graph, Eric? Mm -hmm. Why is it directed, not directed? Because, because for example, you might have two bombs, uh -huh. and let's say A, A and B, and like A and B, and A when you ignite A, it will, it will ignite B, but when you ignite B, it won't ignite A. That's right. Yeah, it's not. Uh, how do you say that? If A to B, B not to A, this it's is one way. One way. It's it's directed graph, okay? <laughs> But A could be to B, B could be also to A, for example, like this one, right? So this is the case that, you know, A to B, B to A. This is a uh, commutative, commutative, right? It's not the word, commutative. A to B, B to A. That's how I spell it. Okay. That's coming. Commutative. Okay, that's it for today. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.